Hi, welcome to the National Goods Choice Online News. This is the Steinberg Review. I'm Robin Steinberg, and welcome to my show. And today we have uh, two wonderful guests who have just, uh, you know, uh, arrived in Singapore, and they are now officiating the the opening of the, this wonderful new performing arts center known as the Star Performing Arts Center here in Singapore. And uh, the two gentlemen here I have is the architect Mr. Andrew Broberg and also the theater and acoustic designer Mr. Tadio uh, Nakajima. Now, uh, welcome to my show. And you know, there are uh, two wonderful questions that my viewers like to know is this. Is, you know, how does this design, uh, the building itself, you know, represent and the sort of icons that has been used and, you know, and observed? I mean, you guys have, you know, I mean, came up with this idea. You know, how, how, what, does, what does it really represent today? The, the project itself? Yeah, that's right. The design and the icons, you know, um, where do you get the ideas from and what do they represent? The design wasn't really conceived of as, as a, a formal icon. The design was conceived of more as an evolution of spaces that one evolves to and moves through and explores and experiences. Mm -hmm. Really? And is it, is it all about uh, biospace or is it more for going green, environmental purposes? Well, well it, it, it is very green. I mean, it is very environmental, but that wasn't the focus. I mean, the, the focus was more about um, elevating the human spirit. Human experience. Isn't human it? experience, yeah. Oh. Now, how, how did you come about working with him? Is this your first time so far? Working with him? Yeah, that's right. Working Unfortunately with not, right? Yeah, no, we've worked together before. But uh, well, as often happens, um, in, my, in, in our profession, we get uh, selected by uh, the person who holds the real vision, which is the client. So we have a client in this case who wanted to achieve extraordinary architecture, extraordinary experience, who had also needed a community to serve, uh, who had this vision for this community, but also wanted a very high quality performing arts component. And so brought the two of us together to work together on creating this thing. And so it's really a, th a three-part three part partnership. Oh, okay. The client, who really has the vision, and then enables us to actually do the work we have to do. Now moving forward, you know, um, leadership in design and, and to be able to conceptualize, what are the three key lessons uh, would you give to aspiring architects and designers? Now, can I start with you first? You know, what would be the key three lessons that you have learned so far? I'm going to be very boring. I think the key the key thing is to understand. There's a framework that you work with. Anyway. There's a professional framework of building industry. There's a time framework. There is a, a, a path to get things done. There is large scale things and small scale things. All of it has to work. You're an engineer. You understand that the small details have to work as well as the big big lines. They both have to be there. And as when you work with the younger younger people, often one or the other is there. And there is no vision that goes from the large scale all the way down to the last nut. And all of it has to be. Is that all? Is that the only point you got to ask me for the first one? Well, well, we got the three, the three, the three points. And I think the second one is really it's interesting. I, I, the second one for me would be I have to say this because this is where I come from, which is that know who and what you're designing for. I think it's, it's well, within the auditorium as well as you can see the space that Andy's designed here. It's really for creating a spaces that human-centric, that are function-centric, that are experience-centric, that really work for what they're supposed to work for. And I think the large part of the, uh, what I, one reason I really like working with Andy is that he, as you say, it is an icon. This will be an icon for Singapore. It's an experience that is an icon, not just the form that's an icon, but that's not what he looked for. Oh, he looked he, for as an experience. Oh, oh, okay. So he didn't imagine that, that there should be a, a the, the, experience. The, 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 no, he experienced much the experience, uh -huh. not the, the shape. Oh, the shape? Oh, okay. And a lot of architects today, I think, are very concerned about shape. And actually, I think the shape is a result of everything else. Oh, okay. Stop there. Okay. okay, so tell me, what's the shape like? Well, well, I mean, that's what Tateo was um, referring to, is that the, the space actually came out of um, responses to different conditions, whether it was a response to how uh, we were hoping somebody can move from the street all the way up through the project into the theater, whether it was um, just a shopping experience that one would have in the lower portions. Um, it, the building was responding one side to the, the MRT. Okay. Um, so you have a train that is 
you know, right adjacent to this, and so on some levels we needed to contain the project from the MRT. But then on the southern side you have One North Park, and you have the, this beautiful green. And so we are also trying to open the project up to that. So with, with this, you know, you start with a mass, you start with a volume. We, we knew the criteria for the theater. We knew the size of the theater had to be. We, we knew where it, it had to be um, in position to the street. And from there, it's about how to define the enclosure and what you're trying to express. Now, you, now you spoke about express. Tell me something. What was the biggest challenge you faced you know, in designing uh, the, the, the acoustics as well as the theater? So I mean, all say call it a theater, a concert hall. Uh, it's a theater. It, it's it's a theater in the sense that it's it's a it's a space that is unique to Singapore and and a unique. size. So if you say it's unique. Now it is what, unique. Though. Okay, what is so unique about it? I mean, there are. Well, first of all, you have the Marina Bay Sands. Sure, but those are those are first of all, you wouldn't believe it, but performing arts spaces are very much defined by their size. So if you design a 50-person cinema, a 50-person recital hall, uh -huh. it's a completely different type of room than a 5,000 seat venue or a 10,000 seat venue. Yeah, it's not just a question of making it bigger, uh -huh. because you want to achieve that same quality of experience, but for a different art form. So when you say, well, what, what makes it unique? Well, what makes it unique, number one, is it is the only 5,000 seater here. That in itself, even <laughs> if we hadn't done a good job, would make it unique. <laughs> But, but what if someone else built another one? <laughs> well, then there will be another one. But at the moment, there isn't. So let's start from there. Okay. But I think I think then then, as we said earlier, there is a, uh, a it was a purpose design venue. This isn't a result. This is not a basketball arena that was changed. This is and and as you get larger in size, because we worked on the acoustics of Esplanade, my group, and that was for a very specific type of usage, very specific range of performances. This is for a different, completely different range of points. No. So the solutions are different. Okay. And and what makes it unique is that we designed this venue from the ground up for this type of experience, this type of usage, and with Andy, uh, helping Andy to achieve this type of um, environment. I mean, it's a, it's a special environment. And, and when you start with a journey sequence, and, and that's what to me this project is all about. It's about how one comes off the street, moves through the restaurants, comes up to into a civic level, eventually comes up into a lobby they didn't expect. If you don't have that final step in the sequence right, then, then it's as if um, you, you wasted your time getting there. So the important But very often, the earlier steps are completely missing from the process because they start and you, of course it has to function. But what's great about the space that if you come for shopping, if you sit down in the bottom to actually just hang out and watch the water, if you bring your kids, if you come for lunch, if you come for performance, these are all very naturally naturally integrated and synergetic, uh, synergetic experiences that enhance each other. Okay, now come to Andrew. You know, tell me, the, the shape of this building is unique. I mean, it's, it's, really, I mean, it's really uniquely sci-fi, or uh, should I? Express that way. No, uh, but tell me, where did you, how did you get the inspiration to design such a building like that? Well, I mean, I mean, I mean that, what, what, this, this, is, is there is there a representation to it? I mean, this this is I mean, it's interesting to me because this is what everyone wants uh, when when they interview me. Everyone wants me to tell them um, that the shape was based on this, but 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 but, but designs not often like that, and my designs are definitely not based on that. That there are so many elements that go into shaping a building. Internal, external, contextual, you know, uh, client-driven, economic-driven. There, there's, there's a lot of uh, processes that go through this. So we knew right away that we were going to have a big mass floating above uh, a space that is going to be more porous. And so it's from, the theater, from the big the, theater. The, the theater we, we knew the theater was above a retail experience. We knew the retail experience, for retail to function, the retail has to be open, and it has to be visible, it has to be light. So all of a sudden, we were faced with the, the real, realization that we had a big mass, that we had to find a balance and a harmony with uh, a more civic experience below. So the theater started getting shaped by um, trying to soften the, the distinction. So the evolution of, these, of, the, of the flow of people, the mass is shaped by that. 
Um, the, the mass is carved with fissures that are actually accessible walking ramps that circumvent the entire project, allowing that experience to continue all the way up to the, the size of the building. Isn't it one of the big points, though? I think ultimately that design is not about a pretty picture. It, that beauty comes from a whole range of things that on each, each element, whether it's product or building, that range of things changes, but it's also about why it's there about how you interact with it, about how it fits within the context, about all these things. So design is, it may, comes back to my first point in a way, is that it's much more complex than somebody thinking, wow, I want to design something that looks like this, and then other people have to make it work. The thing about Andy's buildings is, he's thought about all of that from the beginning, that it's actually there. It may not be all worked out, but it's there because he takes all those major elements and has a vision, if you like, not so much about the shape, I think, as much as the experience. Now, uh, come back to a Andrew right now, and also as well as uh, Mr. Tantadio. Could you, could you give us one point, if you had to relive one more life again, if building this architecture, uh, I know that, would, is there one thing that you have done better? Um, if we were able to have a more reasonable design schedule, uh, then maybe we wouldn't. You know, you know what I would, I would say to that? It's like asking, you know, how would you do? How would you want your child to be different? In a, in a way, the child, a child and buildings are the result of intentions and reality. They combine, and in the end, I don't think, I almost don't think it's. It, it, Excuse me, but I almost don't think it's it's a reasonable question because on one hand, I might have 10,000 things I'd like to do better. Oh. And on the other hand, it is. It, it, it is an entity and it reflects the choices that the client made, the choices you made, the choices we made. And next time we might do it differently, but next time the context is going to be developed. Well, and, and, you know, if we had ultimate control, then that's one thing, but you never do. And so that's that's the beauty of it. it. It's a dynamic, it's a collaborative, and that's why I said it's three parts at it the very least. Fluid, it moves. And, and if it was just his brainchild alone, then, you know, it's it's that perfect idealistic thing. But what he's talking about from the beginning is that we have various pressures, retail pressures, because the shops have to be able to make money. People have to be able to visit the shops and want to spend money and eat here. All these things, people have to want to feel where the venue is, right? One of the things that we said from the very beginning is, this should not be like a cinema at the top of a mall where you don't feel the cinema, right? You go into a mall, you see the mall entrance, you go in and there's a sign that says cinemas. This is not that. From the beginning, we, it was important that people come off the street and know that's where I'm going. Uh -huh. That was a big impression. It, 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 it comes from, you're driving by and you think, that's where they shoot shows. That's where they do this, or that's where you go out but, but, but also be completely happy not to get all the way there. Yeah. Not be completely. And, and at the same time, you're not, you don't, you're aware that it's there. Your shopping or your FMB experience is enhanced by those associations. Now, what would be the one thing that Singapore needs? The next, uh, the, the, another new kind of architecture, a new kind of experience. If you had a power in your hand right now and all, and all the money in the world, and if you had a choice to build a new building, can we just enjoy this one first? <laughs> and, you know, I mean, I mean, if you if you had to do that, you know, or or even a, another new, uh, you know, star, what, 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 what would you incorporate? Yeah, I, I kind of like to tell his response. I, I think uh, right now we're we're so happy with what we have okay. right now, and to me, um, I'm just looking forward to seeing how people interact with this one. Great. Um, to, to see the enjoyment, I hope that people feel. And I, I, I think honestly, well, you're the, you, you live here. I've been coming here regularly since 2000, 2000. And I would say that this building is a paradigm shift already, which, in the way that the building and the people interact, in the way that people understand what a building is. In, in the function in their role in life, and I think that uh, no, you shouldn't listen. But I think that's that's actually when you work with a great architect, that is actually one of the things that is proposed is a shift in how you perceive a building, 
how you interact with it. And, and this, I think, is a paradigm shift for Singapore. Yes, it goes along with many things that Singapore is already good at. Um, spaces deep that are outside, uh, interactions of public spaces that are interesting. It goes, but it pushes that envelope already. And I think, uh, I think rather than, I think already it's something to experience and to decide, do you like it, do you not like it? I'm very encouraged by the number of people who are here before everything is even really open. Um, the number of people who just come and hang out because I think that was something you wanted, you know? And, and that inter interface with that people that, with all the respect due to all the other buildings in Singapore, do people come here? Do they feel something different? Did they have a good experience? What do they feel? Not just whether it was convenient. There's parking here, which is very convenient, obviously. Yes. But, and the, it's right on the uh, MRT. Convenient. That's right. But it's not just about convenience. Why would you come here and not somewhere else? Well, there are reasons. No, Andrew, let's come back to you. Before we let you go, you know, um, what was the main challenge that you faced in designing this building? Was it uh, was it time frame? I know that you mentioned about time frame. And how long did it take you to design this building? And and to your satisfaction today, right now, uh, what advice would you give for future young architects? Who aspire to be like you, it, it, to able to design the next star in the future. It, it, the, the, the biggest challenge that we had, uh, without question, was that we had two different clients who both had to have success, had to succeed. We, they had completely different um, requirements, and so at the very, very beginning, you know, that puzzle of trying to weave these two together, where some aspects are separate and independent, and other pieces are are molded together. Um, and then try to then blur it so that um, the two pieces create a better whole um, by benefiting each other. That was the biggest challenge, um, and that was probably the most exciting time. Um, there was obviously functional issues. You know, you have a 5,000-person theater, um, and you have realities of fire life safety, and, and how do you get these people out of the theater and get the people up to the theater. We, we had to weave all that through, the, the, the structure. Um, how, the, the, the expression of the building largely is dealing with a lot of these issues. Um, but, you know, for me at the very beginning, the fun part was actually that challenge itself, the, the challenge of trying to combine these two people. I, I don't believe in compromise. I, 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 don't, I don't think that you always have to um, find uh, a balance between things. You just have to find a better solution. You just have to find a better solution. And I believe that we have a client below with a retail mall who feels that they're achieving their efficiency, um, they're getting a lot of footfall, um, they seem very encouraged. And we have a client above who has a theater who we just had artists say that it is one of them, the, a, a venue that they consider very yeah, special so globally. So um, I hope that continues and, and that's where I believe our success probably is, is ultimately at. Well, thank you and well said for both great uh, architects of all time and designers. Uh, for this wonderful building, the Star Performing Arts. Well, it's been a privilege yeah. to work with this guy. So you know, great. Right. Likewise, obviously. Well, you know, it's 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 in that sense. I think we're a lot like the uh, yeah. artists upstairs, where the real pleasure comes when you can work with people you like, who argue and you figure it out, and you find a better solution. Until you get to a point where you, there's a sense of having done it together. Right? Yeah, absolutely. But once again, uh, here at the National Grid's Choice, the Steinberg Review, I'm Robin Steinberg. Thank you for joining me uh, with these two wonderful gentlemen who have built this wonderful performing arts center known as the Star Performing Arts Center here in Singapore with Mr. Andrew Bromberg and Mr. Tadio uh, Nakajima. And once again, have a good week ahead and do visit the Star Performing Arts Center uh, here in Singapore. Once again, I'm Robin Steinberg.